How do invisible actors influence what we overlook in history? Few people have heard of Lu Guizhen, and those who have know her as the woman who inspired Joseph Needham to write Science and Civilization in China. Yet far beyond a muse, Lu led a highly unusual life, enjoying a successful career as a biochemist in a century that welcomed few women in science, let alone Chinese women in science. She left China during the Sino-Japanese War, received her PhD at Cambridge, and later served as the advisor of nutritional science for UNESCO in France. But despite her accomplishments, Lu avoided publicity, refusing requests to interview her or publish her biography. After retiring from science, Lu returned to Cambridge to write Celestial Lancets, the history of medicine in China. But she never had any students and never taught. She would actively discuss medicine in private, but once asked to give a lecture, she would cough weakly and explain that she couldn't possibly withstand such an undertaking with only one lung. Why was such an ambitious woman so shy? Nathan Sivan observed Guijin's complexities and teased her for being an English lady, careful to never reveal her true opinions in public. Yet in private, Lu was very vocal on her authority in medicine. On December 1972, Nathan Sivan wrote to Joseph Needham concerning the translation of Huang Di Nei Jing as the Yellow Emperor's Manual of Corporeal Medicine, which was followed by Joseph's reply. The nub of the argument is whether Nei Inna must always imply the magical spiritual, and why outer the rational scientific. Though Joseph alone signed the letter, there were in fact three hearts beating in this conversation, one coming from a petite Chinese woman. Through the form of annotations, Guijin had directly replied to Nathan's concerns on the treatment of inner and outer. Wrong. Only not true. What more does he want? In her notes to Joseph, Lu insisted on the use of corporeal in the English title because she maintained that Nei was based on a physical constitution of the body. In fact, the year before, Guijin had completed a draft on Nei Dan, or the Taoist inner alchemy, which she argued was thoroughly grounded in a corporeal understanding of the body that was not just certain, based on belief, but real. Yet if it were real, why was it also invisible? Had Lu been hiding a kind of uncertainty in her own way of being?